Hello, this is Jeff Robertson, Sales Manager with Penton Audio USA, and this is a quick demonstration video of the Terra Schedule Edge software that we use here at Penton Audio with our new school IP based intercom system. You can create custom screens, and your custom screens can be images like you see here on the screen, they can just be backgrounds, and you can customize your colors, you can put custom text like you see all around here, change the colors and the size and the fonts of the text. Uh, you can have just buttons like you see these group call buttons here. You can change the color and customize all your buttons and the text and the indications on the buttons and buttons placed on any kind of image background. You can have say a campus layout and have screen jump buttons on the buildings and when you press it it will automatically launch you or navigate you to another screen that has the detail of that building interior like you see right here. Uh, you could have a small school like this, you could put all your controls and messages and page buttons on one screen or you can have multiple screens with multiple layers to navigate in and out of um, nested layers as well. But for demo purposes we're going to keep it nice and simple and get everything on one screen so we don't have to jump around. In the very basic form, we would use the Terra Schedule Ed or any of our Terra Manager software suites to conduct a page. So we can conduct a page a couple of different ways. One way we can conduct a page is just select any zone, and I'm using zone image buttons, and I have a couple of different versions here. So let's just click on the Media Center. I just click on the Media Center, and as you can see, the actual image in the map is the button. And once I click just one item I can go over here and click on page and now I can conduct my page and you can see that any group buttons that this one zone or one device is a member of they will also be busy at the same time just showing you that it's a member of those groups then we will hang up I can also select multiple zones or devices to make a page I do not have to pre-program anything in a software group. If I want to do the music room, I'll click there. And if I want to do B103, I can click there. If I want to add the halls, I can click on that image. And I can hit page. And as you can see, they all go to busy. Uh, the busy, the selection colors, 100% customizable, so you can choose your own colors to match your preferences. I can also group any zones or groups of zones or whatever or devices into software groups and assign them to a button. Um, actually, we just create the button and then tell it which zones and which devices are included in that button. So as you can see here, I've got a media B103 and music room, and I've included them in this software group button that says all classrooms. If I click that, you can see it pre-selects those. I can do a live page, and there you go, and they're all so busy. I've done another one for all call, and these are all the devices that I have connected to my demo system here. As you can see, that does an all call, and pages everybody when I do a page. Now they're all busy and I can hang up. Group buttons are useful not only for the obvious purpose of being able to quick select commonly used groups of areas or devices, but also when you want to send messages out or when you use your schedule for bells, instead of having to put a whole ton of devices in there, you can actually just easily one click a group that's already predefined to send your bells or messages to. So that makes a lot of your programming and operations life a lot easier. One of the other functions you can do with the school intercom, and basically since it's part of the name, is you can do a two-way communications with any device that is enabled for that, such as any of our IP speakers purchased in the two-way version that has the integral microphone, or any of our two-way encoder decoders of full duplex modules, or door station, or intercom modules, or paging stations. You can do full duplex two-way intercommunications or change it to half duplex if you want. Anytime I click on any zone that actually has that capability, and we'll click on the music room, you can see up here I have a bunch of options available to me. One of them is intercom and another one is a listen or monitor button. The minute I click on a second one, you notice the intercom and the monitor or listen buttons uh, are grayed out and I can't select them. Obviously I cannot do intercom to two devices at the same time. So I'll deselect one of them and I've got my intercom. So all I have to do is click on the intercom at this point, places a SIP call to the device from my station and now we are doing intercom. And I can listen to the other side of it through my microphone and away we go. I will hang up and I can deselect that. Also when I select any one device that allows for two-way, I can choose to listen or monitor. 
I've got this set up right now for a just a regular listen with the privacy tone included. So it will beep every seven to eight seconds in the classroom speaker to let them know somebody's actively monitoring. And there's the beeps. I don't know if you can hear it over here or not, but you can see that it's busy. And we are monitoring that. And I can turn off the monitoring at any point, And I can deselect. There is an option in the setup that you can actually put another button over here in the function area that says silent listen. So if you use this for, say, uh, special ed where the parents or therapists or facilitators are monitoring a child's progress or whatever through there, you can do that without bothering the child. Or if you're in a security event, law enforcement or security personnel, if you have that option enabled, can actually listen in to zones or areas without anybody in that zone knowing they're being listened to. You can also set that silent listen up with a login or password to keep unauthorized people from monitoring or listening to areas or zones without being authorized to do so. So there's several ways to set up the monitoring, but you can have it with or without the privacy tones. Now we have messages. These are some stored messages that are in the system. And anytime you click on a message button, these are pre-created by the programmer. If I click on it, it opens up the message screen. I have three audio files that are locked in here. We have options from the play window that we can dynamically change the operation of that message without messing around with the integrity of the message. One is the repeat times, and I can change how many times I want that message to repeat. So if I just say two, there we go. And the intervals, the seconds that it will pause between the repeats. So if I put three, it'll play it once and then wait three seconds and then play it again. Persistence is continuous, for lack of a better term. And this is just letting me know that if we did this in the middle, um, that anything past that would not have, or before that would not have played. Persistence means the message is going to play over and over and over again with the three second interval between the plays until we manually stop it, which is good for emergency evacs. I'll put it back on just my one. Right here where it says preview, I can actually listen or preview any of the audio files that are stored in that message button right from my speaker on my microphone station. It does not go out through the system. It just goes to my speaker. So all I have to do is select the target. So if I wanted to go to just one classroom, I could do that. If I wanted to go to the media center, I could do that. Or if I said I want to go everywhere, just hit the all call of the group button. Then I can go to whatever one of my songs that I want or messages, and then I can just hit play. And you can see they're busy, and and we're playing the messages. And I'll stop this manually so it doesn't go through the entire message. And then you can see I can manually stop the message. If you have it playing once or a set number of repeats, it'll play those number of repeats and then automatically stop the message and reset and clear out your screen at the same time. Another version of the message button is what we call the flash record. You can do a flash record by having the record or paging and record functions in your function area. You can hide these or not allow these to be a function on your system if you don't want. What I like to do is create the flash record by actually recording one, putting the button on here, changing it to flash record. And then I like to hide the paging and record buttons over here. And then all they have to do is click on the flash record button that you've created. And I can listen to what my flash record is. Testing, one, two, three, ten. Okay, I want to re-record that. So I go to edit, and I can re-record that message that is on there. And yes, we will re-record. This is a demo video, re-record of the flash record function. And we will stop. And now we can listen to what we just put in there. This is a demo video, re-record of the flash record function. Okay, that's exactly what I want. So now I have to do the same thing as choose my zone or zones, go to the flash record, and actually hit play. This is a demo video. We record the flash record function. And I didn't click on anything, and it stopped once because we only had it for, for, set for one play. And as you can see here, I could set that for different repeat times, intervals, or persistence as well. The tones you heard in the beginning are pre chimes. You can put audio files in for your pre-alerts um, or pre-chimes and any number of files. It will play the main group message, and this could be a list of files, and then it will play the post-chime or the post-group, and you can have any number of files in here. 
So it's a three-stage process, pre-group, main group, and then your post-group or your post-chime. And you can edit those in the main programming and add files to these or whatever. But since this is a flash record, it allows me to do all that right here from the operations screen. The other one I always like to do is put the bells. And the bells on your scheduler can be any audio file that you stored in your system. So you can have the school fight song, you can have seasonal audio messages like sleigh bells at Christmas or howling wolves at Halloween that you want, and they can be any part of your bell schedules. You can also have schedules or an event actually start playing music and streaming audio out, say, through the quarters or whatever. So you can have music during class chains or reading periods or whatever that you may want as well. And how do you set up a schedule it is really easy. We have right up here the scheduler. So if you click on the scheduler, you'll see I have a few bell schedules already programmed in there. If I highlight one of the bell schedules, I just clicked on the normal and it says normal up here. Here's all of the events that's programmed in there. I can hide this by just clicking on this detail toggle button over here. And these are all the events and also the tone that's going out on each event. And as you can see down here, I actually have the school fight song playing at 4.50 in the afternoon. I can look at any day schedule on here, and here's all the schedules I've got programmed in here. So if I highlight one, there's no bells in the bells. Here's my short period bell schedules. Here's my testing, which just has the late bell at 12. But there's my normal bell schedules um, that are in there. I could easily go to any one of these times, and I would actually have all my audio and their targets, whether it's all comments, corridors, or all calls, whatever set in here and I could easily just in one quick so you also want to apply that and you can see I could change that late bell right on that one right there so I could go to any of these on the fly and change the tone or the bell for that event without reprogramming the bell schedule different views I could look at the list view and there's all my list view and from the list view we have a nice feature called a quick schedule select and if you enable all your schedules here you can enable the quick just by selecting the quick or not and once you do that what that means is we have this quick select window right here the operator can click on that and all your schedules that you enabled for this menu pop up here and this is just a quick toggle between schedules so if today we're doing testing and we want to turn bells off or go to the testing schedule all we have to do is hit that and OK and now we are on the testing schedule for that day from that moment and at any moment I can go back and click on normal or whatever schedule you want for that day and now you're running from that moment that instance on you're running on that schedule that you selected also when you do call-ins you can program any call-in to come in to the Terra schedule ed software and I'm going to simulate a call-in right here from IP speaker and you can see it says training. That's actually a training room that we programmed in there. And all we have to do is click answer. And now we're doing intercom. And we will hang up. And that's how you do an intercom. And when we go to the call log, we can actually see, I can filter this out for all of them or just my call ins if I want and leave it on that. And we can see I just had my call in come there and it was answered as well. I can actually call it back and now I'm calling that room back and I'm calling to it and we're talking in a room we can actually manually go to anybody that's called in if we missed the calls and it went into the log or busied out we can actually manually answer the calls or call them right back with one quick click on the screen We can also add this and give a phone number and any information that we wanted on there as well also the last stage that we can do with our intercom system is for program distribution or program audio to be sent out through the corridors or classrooms. Um, I put a couple of them here so these are just audio files that go to encoders such as our Terra IEX modules and they are then streamed out or routed throughout the system to target devices. So if I click on it it's active and all I have to do right now is select where I want this to go or if I say I just wanted this to go to the hallways I could do that and now I could just click on my add route button and it would be playing I have volume control that program in here that actually controls the input level going into the encoder so I can actually dynamically control the audio going out to those zones and I've got a CD player and you can see I can control that from another encoder module and you can have virtually unlimited number of sources 
that you can control and target out to your target devices. Uh, you can even set up a player that will that will automatically be playing a playlist that you stored on there and stream it out to a streaming channel and any devices out there that will pick up that streaming channel will be playing the music automatically and if you have classrooms or areas say the kitchen or the cafeteria or maybe the teacher workroom or even in the classrooms themselves you could put our remote analog controllers with the IP speakers that will allow you to switch between the streaming channels up to eight and also control their volume locally so during a teacher's work period or study period when there's no students the teacher can shut their door and actually flip between the stream and audio channels that are active all the time and then actually control their volume and listen to music or for the media center they could switch to an easy listening for a reading period or whatever so there's a lot of features and flexibility with this software a couple of quick notes this software is can reside on any Windows 7 or Windows 10 PC. We do not furnish the PC. You can use your own PCs. It can be mouse driven or hardware driven. And these can have multiple stations in a, in a school or in a campus or even district wide. As long as you have network connectivity from any point to the other point, then you can put the Terra Schedule Ed software in any of our IP speakers or encoding, decoding, or intercom or paging devices anywhere on the LAN or WAN as long as they've got network connectivity and be able to do intercom, calling, paging, messaging as well. So I hope this has been informative. Make sure you visit us at IFACOM 2017 in Orlando, Florida and have a terrific day.